youtube what's good with everybody it's your boy monk mode so i'm popping up with this video today i hope everybody's having a blessed day seeking fellowship all right now i'm seeking fellowship simply i'm seeking people in my immediate life that i can simply relate to because i don't know if you guys watched my other video where i was talking about how where you feel lonely on this journey it's because no one can relate to you right no one in your immediate life will actually understand you because that's what happens when you become set apart. That's what happens when you accept Christ in your life and you really start to be on fire for Christ. Oh yeah, people aren't going to relate to you. People are of the darkness and they don't like your light. So that's what I was explaining in that other video, right? So I know that on this community, we're tight, right? On this community, on YouTube, on Discord, we're very tight and we all respect each other. We motivate each other and we understand each other most importantly, right? So it's someone to relate to, all that stuff, but... I want people that I can actually pull up and meet up, do some prayer with, you know, study the Bible. People that are of Christ, even just simple stuff like go for walks in nature. Because when you cut off all your old friends like I did, people of the world, you're going to find yourself being lonely at times. Simple. Because we can't stay in isolation forever. I've been in isolation for a long time now. And I'm just seeking fellowship. And I think honestly... What I would like to do is maybe find a church, a church that's really on fire for Christ. Because I know it's rare. I know it's rare to find a church that's actually on fire for Christ. Personally, I've never been into a church since I was a kid. I don't know how I feel about going to look for a church, right? Because I feel like a lot of it's just lukewarm preaching, like I know it is. And I feel like a lot of it is just preaching to not really be on fire for Christ. They're just twisting the words of the Bible up, right? That's what we try to avoid because there's many false prophets in the churches nowadays. There's many false preaching. It's just not the truth. They take the words, they twist it up, right? They take the scriptures, they twist it up, which it says in the Bible to be careful. Be aware if the prophets are talking in the scriptures and they're twisting the scriptures up. You got to be aware and stay away from those people. Facts. They're dangerous. They're double-minded. And simple guys like i know it's rare but i know there's more people like me that are on fire for christ that i could find i know they're rare but i know there's more of them because if i created this community on youtube and i've got people that i'm relating with obviously there's more people in my immediate life that i could find it's going to be hard it's going to be rare but it's going to be worth it and i know it's better when we come together in worship right when we come together in prayer i know it's more powerful for sure in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, it says, For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Facts. There God is in the midst of them. The more you're gathered together, the more powerful it is, really. That's what that verse is saying. Yeah, like praying at home is good. Praying by yourself is good to the Holy Spirit, to the Most High God. It's good to pray by yourself. But once you come together in prayer, it is powerful. Like, it is very powerful. And I'm just seeking fellowship. Like, I think I need to build a new friend circle of like-minded individuals who actually put all their faith in Christ, who gave their life to Christ, right? Because I can't be around these worldly people anymore. Like you guys might know from my previous videos, I can't be around them because evil communications will corrupt your good manners. Facts. But I know that I might not be on my walk where I'm ready to have all that, right? Because... I got to just see where God guides me and I got to keep seeking his kingdom, right? Like it says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So facts, guys, if you keep seeking God's kingdom, you will get what is meant to be on your path. I know it's meant to be on my path to find fellowship, right? To find a group of like-minded individuals. And what's crazy right now, I'm parked right in front of a church. <laughs> this is like a place where i come to record some content because it's next to where i go refill my water up which i don't go to a spring anymore but that's another story and i always come here and park and it's right next to a church but maybe i will walk in that church one day what are the chances maybe they might be on fire for christ who knows but i just know that to find a church it might be a waste of time you know it might be a waste of my energy to try to find a church knowing that a lot of them are not preaching the true gospel they're not preaching to be on fire for christ they're preaching to be lukewarm me knowing this i might save some energy but at the same time i'll never know if i don't try right so i'm gonna have to probably start searching soon who knows one day i might just walk in this church one day and ask if i can be a part of their service just to see what's up but you don't know if you don't try sometimes 
but I'll just go with wherever the Spirit's leading me. Facts. And also in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, it says, For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. So this is talking about the body of Christ, and the body of Christ is very real. It means everybody who is believing in Christ, everybody who has their heart placed on Christ, who gave their life to Christ, right? And the body of Christ, we are the body of Christ, this community on YouTube, right? Everybody was subscribe to me if you gave your life over to Christ. We are part of the body of Christ, and I pray for the body of Christ every day. Facts. But this is all spread out throughout the world is my issue, and I want to get closer to people who are of Christ. But this is what's beautiful about this journey, about this celibacy journey. I feel like it brings you closer to those people. I feel like the more you abstain from sexual immorality, the closer it brings you to fellowship with actual like-minded individuals who gave their life to Christ. Because not many people can put away their sexual immorality. Not many people can fight off that lust. The flesh is burning. Like a lot of people, they just, they can't, they can't put away that instant gratification. They got to live for instant gratification and they can't please the Lord. They can't, you know, they can't put away that lust. And I feel like when you do that, like I've said many times before, when you put away that lust, when you fight that lust off every day and you keep denying your flesh, walking in the spirit, God really brings you closer to that path of righteousness. He really brings you closer to where you're supposed to be in life, your purpose. Yes. Because like I said, guys, a lot of people, they can't fight their flesh off. They can't fight that lust off. They don't have that spiritual power, if you will, that spiritual strength to fight it off, right? The knowledge of what they are doing every time they watch the sites, every time they fornicate. They don't have the knowledge to know that what that is doing, that's cutting into their relationship with God, right? It's basically like limiting it. Yes. Because I don't care what anybody says. If someone says they're on fire for Christ, but they go and they fornicate every day or they watch the sites every day, but then they say, oh, I can just turn to Christ, ask for forgiveness. Like, no, you're not really repenting if you're not changing. Repent means change. Facts. Repent means change, guys. And you're not really repenting if you're just not trying to fight the flesh off. If you just simply keep giving into the flesh, you're not really repenting. Come on, guys. Like I'm telling you, like I've said before, these reasons that there's reasons that I cannot relapse simply anymore. I'm on this celibacy streak and I'm really serious about it because last few times I relapsed, that conviction was so real because since I gave my life over to Christ, I've repented, right? That means I've changed. Changed in heart. For real, guys. Like that change has to be true. But anyways, guys, I got a little bit off topic. But simply, yeah, I'd like to find fellowship. I will be seeking fellowship this year. I think that's a goal of mine. And who knows, I might be end up in one of them churches one of them days. I might just end up in one of them churches, yeah. Who knows, maybe I'll find like-minded individuals, a new friend group. You know, like, that'd be cool. But you know that as a chosen one, you're alright being alone. Because you've been through a lot alone. You're good, like, don't worry, I'm alright by myself. Trust me, I'm, I like my own company, I enjoy it. It's just, it would be nice to have like-minded individuals to do cool stuff with. Like, I don't know, in the summertime, go make a campfire in the woods, take a walk in the woods, take a hike, you know, do some Bible study, do cool activities with, right? I can do all that by myself, yeah, but I'm just saying I'm seeking fellowship. That's what the Spirit is putting into me. Because like I said, guys, you can't be in isolation forever, but isolation is great. Do not disregard that. Isolation can be great. Isolation can be great to get closer to God, facts. This is what isolation has helped me with, but right now I'm going on a long period of isolation like that I've been on. I've been on this for like eight months, but mind you, through this period, like I said, I have one friend really that I didn't cut off, and this guy has Christ in his life, but he's got a lot going on in his life. He's got a kid and stuff, right? He's got his little own family, so I only hung out with this guy like in this last isolation period, maybe like two or three times. It's still an isolation season because I was really focused on God this whole time. But God puts us in those seasons for a reason. That's why I said isolation seasons are a blessing. He puts us in those seasons so we can get closer to God. Facts. But I have a feeling that I got to unite with the body of Christ. Yes, in prayer, in Bible study. Like, this is powerful, guys. But then again, this is why I'm appreciative for this community. And I appreciate every single one of you guys on this channel because... We are all the body of Christ, right? We are united on this channel and we all have something to relate to. That's why when I make these videos, I'm helping people out because they can relate to me, right? 
Because being a chosen one, you are built different. You are different than everybody else, yes. Everybody in your immediate life, they're most likely of the world. You're different than them. If you guys can relate, drop a comment. And drop a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're new. And it's your boy and I'm out.